Hey there guys, <clears throat> just a quick little blab again here from me um, on my Ford Fiesta. This is a 2011, uh, it's got 85,000 kilometers on it. It's a base four-door sedan, the S model they call it, and um, it's the cheapest car Ford makes. One of the cheapest cars sold on the market. Um, manual transmission, it's a five speed, there's no six speed, there's no air conditioning, no power door, no power windows. Uh, it's got keyless entry and power door locks, AM, FM, stereo, and uh, it's got a tachometer. Um, and that's about it. Um, there isn't really any extra things to it other than that. Um, but I tell you, for, uh, for the price, for a car that's fun to drive, um, I don't think it can be beat. This is uh, uh, a very enjoyable car to drive for uh, for somebody who loves to drive. And uh, but yeah, it's a little bit of compromise. It's got a solid rear axle on the rear end. It's just barely tolerable in my mind. Um, I think that uh, small cars uh, can kind of get away with. Uh, solid rear axles um, everyone knows how independent suspension works how one wheel goes over the bump and uh, pulls pulls one side over but more so in a small car versus a big car with a solid rear axle uh, you don't notice it so much in pickup trucks because pickup trucks usually have uh, um, you know they got uh, uh, their rear wheel drive so that helps a lot and um, um, you know, there could be four-wheel drive, but you're usually in, in back-wheel drive. But um, even on a, on a flat surface, when the road changes cam camber, camber uh, and, the, and the vehicle's weight of the vehicle is moving from uh, leaning one way or another, what happens on a solid rear axle is um, uh, the, the, the angle... Of the of the of the wheels uh, to the ground relative uh, and relative to the front, um, what's happening is um, you you feel that in your steering wheel and you're kind of fighting that in your wheel. So if the vehicle rolls over to the right, you kind of got to correct with the steering wheel and correct it over a little bit. Uh, with a fully independent rear suspension and a front, the front and rear work together. So if the car leans over, it's still going to track straight. With a solid rear axle, when the car leans over, because of whatever reason, because the, you're turning, the car's leaning, um, even in the wind, it could lean the car over. Uh, anything that gets the vehicle weight onto one side, um, it's going to change the geometry relative front to rear. So that means you got to make a steering correction. So that being said, on a smaller, lighter car, it's less noticeable. Also, when you got heavier steering. Um, it's more noticeable so that's why if you're gonna have manufacturers I think if they should make a solid rear axle car they should make the steering power steering a touch lighter now Volkswagen has done that with their new Jetta and they got very light steering but that car once you get over you know 70 miles an hour 80 miles an hour it actually becomes a real pain a real you know a little bit difficult to track straight so they probably could put a little bit more um, uh, front uh, alignment tow in to keep the car going straight because that car uh, uh, is a little bit hard, it kind of wanders around as the road changes camber at the higher speeds because there's more there's more forces so and it's a wider car it's a bigger heavier car so manufacturers um, this is probably about the biggest they can go this Ford Fiesta with a solid rear axle in my mind to have fun one car that's really fun to drive is a Honda Fit, smaller, lighter car, uh, Ford um, Fiat 500. I mean, it's a, not a fast car, not a you know, any special car, but it's a it's a great handling car dynamically. And they've done a you know phenomenal job on that car, uh, on the steering dynamics on that car. So it's not very fast, but you can carry your speed through corners and you can drive it. Um, if you're you know the better you drive it the better the car drives and that's very enjoyable in that little car same with the older golfs the old volkswagen golfs they're solid rear axle they're a hoot to drive and they track very nicely they're light they're small they're low so they can get away with the solid rear axle once you get to a bigger 
bigger, heavier car. I had a Corolla XRS. It had a 2.4 liter engine in it, and it had a solid rear axle. Um, because that's a bigger car, they went bigger engine. Um, it got heavier. Um, it was high up. Um, it was a it, it, you're always fighting the steering wheel, and um, you know when you first test drive the car, you don't really notice it. But after you know months and every day driving this car, especially if you're an enthusiast and you, and yeah, it's just driving a car, so you know. But some of us like to improve our driving, get better at driving. Those type of cars, you just can't. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, so that's that's one thing to keep in mind if you're choosing a car, what kind of suspension it has in the rear. Um, all cars have front independent suspensions nowadays. So it sometimes tells you in the brochure, sometimes it doesn't. Usually it tells you that the car has independent rear suspension, but if it's got a solar rear axle, they're just not going to tell you about it. So there you are. Um, thanks for watching and uh, have a good day.